And the tasks are not 40 tasks. In fact, if you do between five and 10, that's a good thing. And I talk about it from the standpoint of A's and B's. The prioritization of tasks are A's and B's. If, for example, people go, what's an A, Les? And I go, well, if an A doesn't get done, the shit hits the fan. Success. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Sex desire is the most powerful of human desires. When driven by this desire, men develop keenness of imagination, courage, willpower, persistence, and creative ability unknown to them at other times. So strong and impelling is this desire for sexual contact that men freely run the risk of life and reputation to indulge in. When harnessed and redirected along other lines, this motivating force maintains all of its attributes of keenness of imagination, courage, etc., which may be used as powerful creative forces in literature, art, or in any other profession or calling, including, of course, the accumulation of riches. Napoleon Hill. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I am super glad that you're here with us today because I have my most amazing guest, Les. Les, thank you so much for being here with us today. Woohoo! That's great to be here. I'm excited. Excellent. Les got all excited when I told him we, I got to turn off the recording and then I got to turn him on again. And it's only seven o'clock in the morning there. So it's a good time to get turned on. Welcome on. to the show. <laughs> so give us a 5,000 foot view of who you are and what you love to do besides sex. Uh, there. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's oh, talk about a framework for the show. Let's, <laughs> right? um, let's talk about productivity and time management when it comes to sex. No, um, <laughs> it's, it's it's all about productivity and time management. So uh, most people have too much to do and not enough time to do it in. Therefore, I can help people get shit done. And the amount of people that I come across either online or in person that say, oh, so busy. Oh, fuck me. I've got so much to do. It's like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my oh God, oh, I'm so busy. It's like, hey, let me help. And that's where I come in, whether it's a person individually that in their life, external business go, I'm stuck, or whether it is a person as a solopreneur an entrepreneur, a small business owner that just has the weight of the world on their shoulders and is struggling under that weight to go, I can't see the wood for the trees. I just am exhausted all the time. Then let me help. I love that. So let's back up the bus a little bit. How did you get into the time management and effectiveness of time as, a, as an area of focus? All right. Uh, I take you right back to when it was first introduced to me, and that was I was doing health and fitness. I was a lad. Uh, I was a wild lad. And my boss came back from a seminar and said, oh, you got to do this seminar and gave me a hug. And I've gone, don't, what? Why? <laughs> why? Why would you? I don't. That's not what we do. Why would you do that? Um, apparently, it was a really good seminar. And he went, no, you got to do it. <laughs> So I went and did this personal development seminar and went, ah, oh, now I see what he's talking about. So a lot of introspection, a lot of what makes a person tick. And I got to see what, what was working in my life, what definitely wasn't working, like how I was being an asshole, how I, was, how I wasn't honoring other people. And then immediately after that was a time management session. And everyone was walking around with these time management planners and being very efficient and effective. And I've gone, I think I need to do this. So his name was David Allen. And he was the same facilitator that did my personal development. And um, it changed my life. Nice. It really did make it from what I call um, drifting Dennis through to being effective and efficient and honoring. And it was, it, it just worked. It It's something that, fitted all my boxes it just enabled me to 
to be an effective and goal-oriented person. So in changing my life, I then started my own training company and this undercurrent of time management always there. People go, how can you be on time all the time? Or how can you be so organized? Or how come you don't worry? Well, I have a system. I have a, I have a planner. I, I do do the, the steps required. And um, it wasn't, oh, I did a lot of sales and customer service and leadership and communication and team building training. And un the undercurrent was time management. So when someone said, you need to launch your business again, and there's a story in that, but um, in launching my business again, it became the focus of time management and uh, getting shit done. I love it. And it seems that you take a very pragmatic approach to <laughs> personal development of all things in that it's like everybody gets it. Okay, I need to have a goal. I need to focus on the end game. But then you separate it into this fantastical sort of way that people actually get that I, once I've broken it down into all of these elements, I actually see which moving pieces I have control of and which ones I don't, which ones I'm overwhelmed by, which ones are easy for me, which ones I really want to delegate, get the fuck off my plate, and which ones I really need to get my head out of my ass and, and start to look at this and go, hey, grow up, wear your business pants, and let's get started. So can you break that down for people? Because I think it's fascinating. Life is easy we make it complicated. <laughs> Life is easy. So I have an easy model. And uh, it's, uh, if you take the word easy, E, A, S, and, and Y, the E, A is external action, the S is support, and the Y is yes, or uh, what I call internal focus. So for productivity sake, what are you doing? Because it's no good planning, 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 planning without action. And we get stuck on action because sometimes in the past, <laughs> you go and do an action and someone slaps you upside the head and you go, fuck if I'm doing that again. That's just, nah, nah, not doing that. That's, that's just, wow, how did I end up there? I don't understand. I'm never going back there. So you, you tend not to do that action again, whereas you were very young or you're very naive or they were just a bad person. And it doesn't necessarily uh, track what was to what could be so therefore look at the assumptions that you make around not doing action look at the assumptions you make around not risking look at the assumptions that you make around uh, getting out of your comfort zone because I do a, a large piece on comfort zone the comfort zone is what you do day to day with your eyes closed it's like now it's easy it's just falling off a log it's just day to day you don't even have to think about it the comfort zone model then goes into stretch. It's like you move into that stretching outside of what's comfortable into what's uncomfortable and do new things or different things. Don't go further than your stretch zone into what I call the panic zone, where you go into freeze mode. And then there are those people that just go beyond the panic zone into the what I call the twilight zone. And it's like, ugh, fair dinkum. Hello? Earth to so-and-so, come back. You're not even being real right now. So from what's comfortable stretch, what can you do? What's one new thing you can do? What's, what's something you can stretch into, lean into, that'll give you more of the result that you're after and find out if it works for you. Find out if it's, um, if it's going to work. So that's an external action. So like press in, get out of your comfort zone, do something about it. A lot of people do a lot of planning, and we all know about planning because proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So <laughs> I understand that, the seven Ps. I understand the seven Ps. But once you've done your planning, get off your ass and go do something. It, it's important to do. Someone once said, um, ready, fire, aim. Think about that, ready, fire, aim. It's like ready, so do something and then course correct. Because a lot of people go, oh no, it has to be perfect. I can't, I can't get into it yet. I can't, I can't actually go there yet. It's like, no, 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 go there and course correct. St don't be tentative with it, because you've got to be in your life. You've got to where you are in your life by making good decisions up till now. Keep going. All right. So there's external action. EA, 
S is support. So support comes from two areas. One is from external, called people coming up and going, hey, Michelle, can I give you a hand? Or Michelle coming up to me. I'll turn it around, Michelle. Michelle coming up to me, going, Liz, can I give you a hand? No, Michelle, I'm fine. I'll do it myself. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Now, I know, Michelle, you're not like that. But I know that we, I know that we have people in our lives that do that. They, they right? push everybody. Nah, fuck off. I can do it myself. No one can do it as good as me. Why? Because I'm brilliant. I am. I am a supernova. I, I, I am everything to everybody. Leave me alone. And damn it, they love me. Right? <laughs> Correct. Correct. The, the universe is revolving around you. So given that, what, what people do in that situation is they stand in the ego called, that's the thing. So like it's all about me, all about me, all about me, and I'm the one that has to do it. So I'm saying step off your ego and let people in that are willing to support you. They're already there. They're already asking, let them in. That's one part. The other part is sometimes you need to get off your ego again and ask people, Michelle, can you give me a hand? If Michelle then says no, I don't go into the corner and crawl up in a ball and say, everybody hates me, nobody loves me, I'm going to eat worms. It's like, no, 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 no. Just because Michelle has said no doesn't mean that Tom won't say, say yes and somebody else says yes and somebody else says, who knows who's going to say yes, so keep going. So support is available to you. Sometimes you need to ask for it. So external action, support, asking for support and being supportable. And the, the why is yes. What is the, the internal focus that you create for yourself? Do you have an internal focus that is positive? Do you say, yep, I can do this? Do you have affirmations running? Do you have a vision board? Now, these, seems, these seem really weird things for business, but they actually work. And it doesn't need to be something all flowery. It's like, I've got a vision board and it's got exactly what I want. It's got words on it. It's got pictures on it. And I have it directly in front of me. I've got one directly above my camera right now is my goal for this year that myself and my wife will earn a certain amount of money for this year. It's got the, it's got the date, it's got who, and it's got a specific amount. Now, I see that every time I'm on camera, which is a lot. And I've got it on the bathroom mirror and I've got it beside the bed. So as I wake up in the morning, I see it. When I go to bed, I see it. So that visual thing enables me to go, this is what I'm creating. This is what I'm doing. So the three keys, external action, support, and yes, E-A-S-Y, easy. The three of them together are really, 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 really are very, uh, what's the word? Effective in creating results. Why? Because you can't just have E, A, and the Y without the S because you're not letting people support you. The E, A, and the S without the Y, you cut your own legs off by what you say to yourself. And the Y and the S without the E, A, you're dreaming because you're not doing action on what it is that you're after. So time management fits underneath that and go, okay, so how do I, how do I work with time? How do I enable this thing called time, which no one escapes from, how do I work with it to get shit done? Nice. I love it. So let's take it to another level because I think some people that are really what I'm going to call artsy fartsy, the creatives, the ones that <laughs> I love working with, are we go, hey, let's build a vision board. And they're like, yes, and <laughs> it's done. They've got this stuff all over the place and it's, you know, magical and entertaining. And then there's the other side of the spectrum and they're going, I have to do a what? And like, is there a spreadsheet for this? I could totally do that. And <laughs> yep. I think part of the fun part is that of that is when you give those kind of people a layout and say, hey, I get it. You want to build X and everybody will pick. I want to run a million dollar business. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. Then what? Like, then you have to do things within that business. And that's usually the part where they get screwed up is like, what does my day look like? Well, I want to be lying on the beach and uh, smoking cigars and drinking margaritas. And okay, that's not a million dollar lifestyle. <laughs> I appreciate that you want to do that. That's awesome. However, <laughs> to get to the million dollars, you got to be doing something different. So talk to me about that part of it. 
Uh, oh, so many things we could talk about. First one is leadership. Um, for you to be a, a leader in life, you need to choose it. And everyone wants to be a leader, even if it's just a dog. So being a leader is a choice of getting up and going, I'm going to lead. Now, I lead my life. I lead, I lead several um, uh, groups of people. Um, I've got leadership in my business. I've got leadership in service in the community. So I choose to lead. And if you choose to lead, it's just a matter of sometime being real with what's going on called, you know, I am a leader. Okay. And then making more decisions. A lot of people will get into trouble when they don't make decisions. So rather than put stuff off and procrastinate, and a big one in around email and just decision making comes down to, you know, you need to make a decision. Don't put it off. Make the decision now. You didn't get to be where you are by making shitty decisions. Therefore, make a decision, get on with it. And the more you get on with it, the more you make decisions, the more you go forward. So leadership in making decisions, not procrastinating, not putting it off, making decisions and having a plan. What is your plan? So, so let's talk about the gorgeous graphic you have beside behind your head right now on yep. the visual side of things, because I think if people were to set goals in all of those areas and then to your point, make decisions, good, bad, otherwise just make a decision and then figure out how to make that a good decision. And, and then I think people have something more tangible to focus on in the completion of their goals. So walk me through that. Okay. So the graphic is um, my program, which is uh, 12 modules. Mm -hmm. There are 97 videos in amongst the modules and people walk themselves through it. Most of the videos are two to three minutes each. Nice. And each of the 12 modules let me go through them. So there's audit, audit your business, have an opportunity to really take stock of where, and a lot of people have never done that. So I really, I really like audit. It's very deep and it, and it is a lot of fun. <laughs> How can an audit be fun? It's fun. So systems, what systems support <laughs> you? It's not an FBI you? audit. It's, it's no, okay. no, not an <laughs> IRA, IRA, not audit, no. Um, <laughs> Systems, what systems support you? Do you have a trusted system in regards to your planner, et cetera, et cetera? Planning, how do you do planning? Marketing, a lot of people in small business, entrepreneur, solopreneur, kind of don't know how to market. So we, we'll do an overview on that. And that's really, really dynamic. Sales, I don't like sales. Good luck with that being in business if you don't like sales. So how do you do more sales? How do you make sales easy? How do you make it simple? Uh, email and paperwork, <laughs> so many things in email and paperwork. And, and it gets like inbox zero and people go, what is inbox zero? So I talk about how to get your inbox to zero, how to, to handle paperwork, customer service, being in small business, it's not easy. So how do you deal with customers and how do you use your team? If you have a team, how do your team deal with customers? From there to productivity, how to increase your productivity, um, self-care, oh, solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and small business owners, they really do not look after themselves. So I, I am continually talking to my, my people, people, the participants in my program about it's not about necessarily the output. Sometimes it needs to be looking after yourself. I said to someone two days ago, I said, you know how you're on the back end of COVID she said, yeah. I said, you know, you've only got 30% capacity right now. She went, yeah. I said, why don't you just operate at 30%? And that that whole thing enabled her to just go, oh, permission to not be 100%. It was amazing for her to just <laughs> go, oh, I've been given permission to only do 30% of my normal 100%. And then in that, she can have the freedom to do what's required in that 30% and feel like she's still achieving and yet looking after herself. So self-care, leadership, and we've talked about leadership, and there's a huge, I got huge amounts of content in leadership, um, even, even down to the whole Eisenhower matrix of decision-making. Um, discipline, mm -hmm. discipline and habits. It's a great one. It's got eight, eight videos in that. And then continuous improvement. One of the continuous improvements that I do really quickly is a weekly review. 
Have you ever done a weekly review? Do you get the end of the week and say, what worked this week? What didn't work this week? How can I do things better? Where did I fuck up? Where am I brilliant? Where, like, what is this? So you get to the end of the week and you, you're, you can do it on your own. You can do it with somebody else. You can do it in a small team. I actually have the opportunity to do it with my wife. And we go to a coffee shop and we go through her diary and we go through my diary. And then I'll do a, a KPI dashboard, a key performance indicator dashboard, and I'll outline what are the things that are really key performance indicators for my business. And I share them with her so that I am accountable. I'm not just running off playing games. I'm not just going to network meetings and nothing coming out of them. Are you creating things? So those things are the 12 modules and they really enable an individual to get a grasp of their business. Now, the program itself is three months long and the videos, three to five minutes each, some of them are longer. The first one that you watch is an hour just to give a baseline of the ESI model, but they work through that. And then at the end of that, people stay on and, and just do weekly and monthly coaching. Nice. I love that. And to me, that just, it breaks down the model of business so much better than simply what's your marketing, what's your sales, what's your accounting, <laughs> which is pretty much how people go, I want to make this much money. I want to have this many clients. <laughs> I want to do this much work. And it's like, okay, there's again, a little more complexity to it. But once you have that image or that picture of it and you've broken it down, then it becomes very simple to just go from thing to thing. And I love that planning to plan is one of your things because I think people <laughs> do it very, um, they do it innately. They're planning to plan to get ready to get ready and they, but they don't have a system for actually how are we going to plan <laughs> this? Yeah. Like we're not just going to kind of wait for you to get your shit together. Like let's actually have, how are we really planning? Talk to me about that one because I think people have a huge issue with that. I have a, a what I call a trusted system and it's on my left hand right now. And it's a, uh, for me, uh, it's a file of facts. It's a six ring binder. It uh, has the ability to put a calendar in it, but it also has the ability to put my uh, areas of responsibility in. Now, my calendar, the majority of my date calendars and my bookings are in electronic. I share a calendar with my wife as a Google calendar. She can put stuff in. I can put stuff in hers. That, that just works. But my day-to-day -day running of the business happens in my planner. I've got a page on the left-hand side, which has the hours. So I go, what appointments have I got during the day? And it stays open so I can see it. I don't have to really think about it. I just go, what's next? What's next? What's next? What's next? So that's your, your schedule. And then beside that are the tasks. So what tasks do I need to do today? And the tasks are not 40 tasks. In fact, if you do between five and 10, that's a good thing. And I talk about it from the standpoint of A's and B's. The prioritization of tasks are A's and B's. If, for example, people go, What's an A, Les? And I go, well, if an A doesn't get done, the shit hits the fan. You know, the brown smelly stuff hits the round twirly thing. And that's an A. It can be a loss of contract. It can be a loss of face, loss of money. You know, those times when you get end the day and you put your head on the pillow and you go, wow, what a day. And then all of a sudden you remember you haven't paid the bill. That's an A. <laughs> and that's why that if you don't get that A done, it costs you an extra 150 bucks. That's fucked. No one's got time for that. So given that, that's an A. You do A's early. You do A's early. Get it out of the road. Any bill that you need to pay that has to be paid on the day, otherwise it's going to cost you money, get it done early because it's like, no, I don't want to pay it, but you have to pay it. So rather than cut the puppy dog's tail off one segment at a time, you go one cut, bang, done, and it heals as opposed to a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. There's more pain in that. And it's the same with making decisions. I know I need to do it, but I don't want it, but I do, but I don't, but I do, but I don't. No, make a decision, get on with it. So A's and B's. B's are anything that's not an A. Will some of the B's turn into A's tomorrow? Yes, but it's about A's are time-framed. 
called I have to get it done. Otherwise, I'm going to lose a contract. I'm going to lose a client. I'm going to lose reputation. Or I'm going to lose finances. I'm going to lose money. So that's the system I have for day to day. And then I'm looking at it going, Am I, have I got all the A's done for today? And I fit the A's around the, the scheduled appointments and the podcasts and the meetings that I have. So that the more that I can get the A's done early, the better my day is, rather than just leaving and going, I'll get to that one. No, get it done as soon as you can. The Brian Tracy wrote a book called Eat That Frog. And then someone said, if you've got a choice of, of two frogs, sorry, if you've got two frogs, then eat the ugliest one first. <laughs> and what that what that's about is sometimes you've got the choice of two evils and you go, I don't like doing that one. I don't like doing that one. But what's the biggest payoff? Or what's the hardest? And once you get started on it, you go, oh, it's not that bad. And you get it done. And you go, Phew, that's a weight off. Let me do the other one. And then you're on with your day. And the weight the weight of the day just lifts into, oh, look at me, I'm being all productive, let's go. So it really is something that assists an individual to go, hmm, yes, you know, this stuff of getting stuff done early really does work. I don't think people realize how much emotional headiness costs our day. Like I have seen people waste an hour trying to avoid getting something done that took 10 minutes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, so if you're doing that six times a day, you've now broken your day down to a one hour day <laughs> instead of a yeah. six hour day. Yeah. And you know now what are you gonna do with your time? And it becomes astounding to people when they start you know, eating ugly frogs first that so much more can get done. And then looking at the day going, wow, what did I used to do? Yeah. And, and the things move, things shift. Uh, I've got a, uh, the, the way to categorize tasks. So you do a data dump and you get everything out of your head that you've been thinking about. And that's everything that's either you thought of and not actioned. So it started, started, not continue, continue, not finished, finish and not acknowledged. So that's a cycle of com, uh, productivity. So once you get everything that you've been thinking about out of your head down onto paper, then you categorize it and go, are there any things on that list that I can delete? Because really it's been on there for 12 years and I'm not going to get the fuck it done. So I just piss it off. Get, <laughs> go, be gone with you. We give you permission head. to get rid of anything off your list that's been there for 12 years or more. Exactly. But people go, <laughs> oh, but it's really cute and I really love it. It's like, yeah, but you haven't done anything about it. So okay. let's, let's just be honest. Let's get that one done. And then there are two minute jobs, things that just take two minutes. And, and it came, I got into this because once you start to do the two minute job, you actually feel productive. I got that one done. I got that one done. I got six two minute jobs done before I even opened my emails. Like, whoa, look at me. I'm on fire. So, based on that, the productivity rises and you go, what's the next task I can do? Where do I go next? What can I do? I'm going to handle the garage, that, that sort of thing. Like, I, no, don't do that yet. That's a project. Not during business so, hours. <laughs> no, you get lost. So what are you going to delete? <laughs> Two-minute jobs, then single action items. Single action items are longer than two minutes and not a project. It's like a library book. You pick the library book up, stick it in the car, drive to the library, put it through the slot and drive home again. In and of itself, it's singular. Can you do other things while you're doing that? Yes, you can. However... It's singular. It's a single task, longer than two minutes. So what are the single tasks? And then what are the projects? Projects have more than one action to them. And there's always a next action. So I say, if you're ever stuck in a project, ask yourself two questions. First question is, what are we trying to achieve? What's the end result? What does done look like? So that you get the big picture, the 40,000 foot view of what you're trying to achieve and then you come down really tiny and go what is the next step because there's always a next step on a project always a next step so you can go okay what's the next step now i've got a, um i got two major projects one is my book get back an hour and every day so the book itself was a day by day by day by day and it took me 12 months. Someone said, 
you know, you've got enough material to write a book. And I went, no, I don't. <laughs> My wife hit me and said, yes, you do. And I went, okay, well, okay, here's, here's what I'll, I'll, in 12 months time, I'll have a, a manuscript. And 12 months later, I had a manuscript. Why? Because I did something every single day. And I've got these, these 12, 12 modules. I got the 12 modules exactly the same way. I've got 97 videos and I just went, what is the next thing that I can do on putting these videos together? There's always a next step, always. Um, Love that. I, think, I am absolutely going to put in a half hour for writing my book every day into my calendar. I'm going to do that right now. So you talk amongst yourselves while I go do that. <laughs> There's one other thing on that list where you've got things you can delete. You've got two minute jobs. You've got single action items. You got projects, and then there are someday maybes or someday aisles. You know, someday I'll go and visit this. Someday I'll travel here. Someday I'll maybe I'll I'd like to put a patio on. I'd like to. So those sorts of things that aren't for this week, this month, and maybe even this year, you can put it on a separate list. And as you're doing your planning for next year, you can go to that list and go, is there anything on this list this year that I want to do? They really want to bring in and and make a reality this year. Those hearts, desires that aren't today or this week. So that's that's that wrap up of that particular thing where if you categorize what you've got, you then have a better ability to do something in that category. It's like, I've got two minutes, what can I do? And you can go to that list. Oh, I've got something, I've got a project. What's the single next action step that I can do on that project? Nice. I love talking to you. I always get so much done. <laughs> I don't know what it is. You just make me feel so productive. It's like, oh yeah, I could totally, I could totally. In fact, I should do that. Right. Hey, look, that's done. <laughs> Busy just writing, stick you on writing, mute writing. While I'm... Don't mind me. <laughs> My free and coaching a session. Lot of it, a lot of it can be done. I, I have a saying at plan each day the day before. So as you finish your day, Plan out tomorrow. So don't leave your desk unless you plan out tomorrow. And I, I love the analogy of, hey, Michelle, have you ordered that breakfast for tomorrow? And Michelle goes, that wasn't my job. That was on your list. Shit, 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 shit. <laughs> Quick, pick up the phone. Hello, hello. Can you do a breakfast for tomorrow, please? Oh, great. Thank you very much. And that I caught that because it's the last thing I did prior to leaving my desk. I planned tomorrow. We've got a breakfast. Michelle, no, Les, oh, crap. And I make the call. It's a whole lot better than getting to tomorrow's breakfast and going, Michelle, where's the breakfast? And she says, it wasn't on my task list. It was on yours. Oh, fuck. <laughs> right. Ouch. That happens. ouch, ouch, ouch. So planning each day the day before enables the individual to go, what's coming up tomorrow? What meetings have I got? What do I need to plan for? And what are the tasks? And hey, in we're doing a lot from home. But still, we need to go out and visit people. And sometimes we've got an office in between us and them, or it's in the opposite direction. If it's in the opposite direction, it's a whole lot better if you leave your office to come home and bring the stuff with you that you're going to take to a client, as opposed to, oh, get up, I look at my, oh, I've got a Joe Blogs. Oh, I've got to take X, Y, and Z, and that's at the office. And I have to go back to the office and then come back my way to get to the client, and it's a waste of time. So talk about get back an hour every day. That's some of the things that happens when you go, if you plan the day before, you can make sure that your ducks are in a row and save your time. Oh, my God. You have given me and us so much information. This has been fantastic. And it's just a tip of the iceberg, and we get so excited when I do things like this because it's like all of a sudden I'm become so efficient go figure right <laughs> so so we'll be signing up for your stuff but before we get to that i want to give me an example of one of your cinderella stories one of your clients Cinder that you worked with okay uh, she's not cinderella but she is a marvelous human being uh we call her jm and jm when she came in and did my training on get back an hour every day and got a trusted system, she has um, a, a number of health problems and she's scattered and she's 
she's uh, a, a creative, she's an artist. So what happens in that is she got organized and being organized, she got stuff done. So in getting shit done, she goes, I, I, I could do this. So she created another company and I could do this and she created another firm and she, I could do this and she created another arm. So what happened was she has now got five businesses because she got her shit together. She got a trusted system and it is going gangbusters. She's winning awards left, right and center. She recently won a, a chief ex, international chief executive award. Um, and you kind of go, what? And, and it's all because, and she says, and I'm not speaking out of school here. She says, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for get back an hour every day, get more time in Les Watson. And I'm quoting her. She says that. So that that's that's her just doing what's required, taking the material that I have and putting it in. And another one, I'll give you another one. I was working with a guy on the other side of the bay here in, uh, in around Melbourne, and he didn't really, like he's good as an engineer, didn't really know how to do business. And all I did was come alongside and go, what about this? Where do you want to go? He's doubled his revenue every single year that we've worked together. Yay! And it's just, it shocks me. And I go, my wife goes, why are you shocked? You do good work. And I go, <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll receive it. All right. Thank you. Because you can take an artsy party that's completely like the pride and joy of their life is the spontaneity and the, and the splash with which they live to the opposite end of the spectrum, to the engineers where everything is A to Z and organized in one, two, three, yep. <laughs> you know, both of them. That is fantastic. So there you go. There's a couple of stories of people, ordinary people. It's not, you don't have to be extraordinary. You don't have to be anything to be able to get back an hour every day. You don't have to be special to be productive. Good. That means we qualify. That awesome. Yeah. Okay. So how do we, <laughs> I know our listeners are going to want more from you. How did they uh, start their journey with you? I've got two companies, get more time and get uh, creating success coaching. So the easiest one to get me is getmoretime.com.au. I'm in Australia. Really? With that accent? Are you in <laughs> wow. Australia? Wow. And, and the, the way I've got a giveaway. I want to give you something. So yeah. this will be in the show notes as well. It's a 25 time tips. So 25 top, see, I've used up all my words already, already. <laughs> 25 time tips for busy people. And that's get more time dot com dot au forward slash time tips but it'll be in the show notes yes it will awesome that's a freebie Yay. from les excellent thanks les <laughs> you're welcome it's been great i look forward to the next time we have a bit of a chat awesome absolutely but before i let you go i have to know at what point in life did you know that you were a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur i think it was Growing up with my mum and dad being publicans, they had a um, hotel motel and they were doing it. They then he went and became an oyster farmer. I'll just go and create that. So I had it modeled to me and I did a lot of corporate. I did a lot of stuff where I was underneath and doing the nine to five. And then eventually I went, you know, I'm going to do this myself. So being a trainer and uh, creating, um, giving, serving teaching and it just became an evolution of you know you're really good at this keep going so that's where it came from i love that you have been awesome i love and appreciate all of your time always any last words for our peeps um make decisions be bold uh have fun with it make life easy because it doesn't have to be hard you can go from hard to easy just at the at making a choice so uh, I, I love being here that you, you, you make uh, podcasting really easy when, when you sit back and go, let's go, just have at it, son. Just <laughs> and we love to it. talk about how you got hard and how easy you are. So, you know, anytime <laughs> you want to come back and talk, I'm, I'm here for you. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Liz. Peeps, thank you for being here with us today. This is Michelle Nedelec, your mistress in business and I'd like to thank you again for your time because 
I want you to get it up and keep it up in your business. So be sure to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app so that we can be there for you when you need it, whether you like to make it hard or easy. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Little Blue Pill for Business podcast with your mistress in business, Michelle Nedelec. Why are you still here? Go to littlebluepillforbusiness.com and get your goodies. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share it with somebody else that you know would enjoy getting it up in business after you subscribe to the podcast, of course, so you won't miss any future episodes. Now, check the notes for links. Oh, and only tell your wife if she's into this, you know, entrepreneurship. And I'll see you both on the other side.